You know what would be funny? If we welded this thing up and then the, win and then the window wouldn't fit. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Quick and dirty break in the action here. Uh, good old cell phone. I'm going to go ahead and patch up this hole in the end of our uh, panel. And uh, I just, it was a little oval shaped. I tapped it down with the uh, ball peen hammer a little bit. And I uh, cut a little piece of uh, sheet metal and bend it up on our little sheet metal break over there. And I put some weld through primer on the inside of both pieces. And uh, let me go ahead and weld this up. And then when we're done with that, We'll uh, do a little plug weld on the other side for, to uh, fill in the uh, the rest. So, all right, we'll be right back. All right, that's what that looks like. Uh, just to, you can't do a continuous roll around. You have to do a little pulse weld. It's just you zip and then let it cool and then zip and then let it cool and so on and so forth. Uh, so that looks pretty doggone substantial. And, of course, we have this portion back here. Let me get the wire wheel after that, we'll clean that up a little bit, and then we'll fill that hole in with weld. All right, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but this is the way I'm doing it. Let me go ahead and get my uh, cutting wheel or my grinding wheel down in here and just sort of I'll contour that. And uh, we'll just see how good a job we can do. All right, that's what we got. We uh, filled that in, we plug, uh, we plug welded, I guess you'd call it. And then got the flap disc out there, or not the flap disc. We've got the uh, we've got the cutoff wheel after it, and we just came in there and just contoured it like that. And then we got in there with the flap disc and knocked it off a little more. And, and finally, we used the die grinder wheel, that little guy right there, to uh, try to smooth it down. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be filled with goop, you know, window seat rubber sealant. You know, it'll be filled up with sealant. And then, of course, the rubber for the window will fit over this, this flange right here. And on the back side, to accommodate fitment, and, of course, this surface will have to be spot welded to the surface on the car. So I knock this down with the flap disc to accommodate that. All right, so... I'm sure I'll have to do a little more tweaking on this piece before we get ready to uh, put it on the car. Clearly, it will have to be, you know, we'll have to uh, get all this sealant out of here. We'll probably get some uh, some goof off after that to get that out of there. And then ultimately, we'll uh, do an Eastwood metal prep, or I'm sorry, we'll do a Pour 15 metal prep on this to get it, get it ready. And then we'll hit it with some um, weld through primer to get it ready for spot welding onto the car. All right, so we uh, filled in that little cut I made earlier uh, to get this uh, panel removed. I made this cut and I put a little piece of metal on the back side and uh, I filled it in on this side as well and tried to smooth it out as best I could. And I think that's about as good as I can get it. I think it's gonna be good enough. Once you get some paint on there, you know, you're standing back here putting your groceries in, you'll never see that anyway, so who cares? And I need to fill this one in as well. So I'll probably do that next. All right. I think I've done about as much as with this piece as I can. Um, just got through grinding, buffing, die grinding, cleaning, nylon wheeling, flap desking, wire brushing, you name it. Soaking in evaporust. Welding up holes. Here's our hole down here that we welded up. That'll be covered up with goop. So there's the back side. We've already looked at that once. So at this point, we are ready to prepare this piece for installation. So up next, this piece is ready for POR 15 metal prep. All right, had a little wipe down there. And uh, let's go ahead and soak our part down and the instructions say keep this wet for a absolute minimum of 15 minutes but that's just you know 
No, we're going to do like an hour. And these really cheap, I got these for a dollar at uh, Wally World. And they're just absolutely fantastic. They just work and work and work. Don't have any issues with them. So, about every five minutes, that's what I'll be doing for the next hour is flipping it over and soaking it down. And then we'll rinse it off with water and then we'll wipe it dry. And then after that, we'll apply a uh, primer. All right, we're, uh, we're drying now. We've got some weld through primer on the back side of our piece. Uh, this is after we have already done the metal prep. We, uh, we sprayed metal prep on there and left it for an hour or maybe a little over an hour. And you can see how, you can see how, how dull it is after that. Uh, and then we rinsed it off the water and wiped it down. And I painted the back side with the uh, weld through primer. Before we put this on the car, I'll probably come in here and apply some Pour 15 to the under to this area in here, the part that doesn't get welded. Uh, just you know, and, and especially on this this welded part right here, just as a precaution. And I just noticed a uh, a cut that I put in there. I guess I'll need to weld that up before I put it on the car. So uh, let me show you what I've done over here on the corner. On the passenger side corner, I filled in that little cut I made previously. It looks about as good as the other side, but then again, it, it just won't matter. Uh, it looks like the factory painted the side of this thing black to match the trunk, which is, we're going to need some more black apparently because it's <laughs> kind of nasty. So what I'll probably do is I'll paint the side of this black to match the trunk after we get the uh, the piece on. Pour 15 will go in he all in here, and but not here, the spot welds go there. So we'll leave that weld through primer as is. And then of course, pour 15 will go all in here, especially on this bare metal here. So I am uh, slowly but surely just sort of nitpicking and getting all these little details and trying to find all the little bitty things that I need to do before I put this thing on the car and start spot welding. Up next, I think I'm going to break out the pour 15 and uh, coat all the surfaces that I just discussed. All right, I got the shop vac out, pulled the paper back, and basically just vacuumed up all the, uh, the metal filings and dirt and stuff from our work. And it's still pretty kind of greasy. So nothing that super clean can't take care of. So up next, I'm going to wipe this whole area down with super clean. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, apply the uh, pore 15 brush on treatment. All right, we've got our uh, super clean out and uh, clean up the, uh, the back dash frame, I guess you want to call it, or the hat rack frame. I don't know. The, uh, the bare bones substrate of the hat rack. What do you, I don't know what you call it. You know, whatever. Just basically just degreased it, you know, so. And, uh, but uh, whatever's left on there, nothing that the Pour 15 can't adhere to. All right, I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and uh, let's go ahead and lay some Pour 15 over this bare metal. All right, first coat. Uh, very, very light. Just dab. Dabbed it on very lightly. So this is a rubberized coating over the metal. I thought maybe when I first started this project that those were rust bubbles, but I dug into one of them with a screwdriver, and I, it's just where the product bubbled up. So thankfully, we don't have to worry about that. I did not put the Pour 15 on this surface. Well, I did, like right right here, and then I thought, oh yeah, I have to spot weld there. <laughs> anyway, so I just went in here and put put it down where I could, and I put some down in down in that uh, valley there. Found a couple of places here where the uh, couple of rusty screws, so I just dabbed it on there. Oh, I missed one over there. Let me go dab that over there, and then we'll uh, we'll let this dry, and then we'll put another coat on. All right. So if you've never put on this uh, Pour 15 stuff here, warning, warning, warning. Vapor harmful. May affect your brain or your nervous system. Basically, 
you know, wear a respirator like that one and wear some safety goggles like those, which is what I used when I applied this product. I didn't use gloves, although I should have. All right, instead of sitting around watching paint dry, let's go do something else. All right, uh, several hours later, actually the next day, <laughs> they say recoat this poor 15 in two to six hours, but it, I think it'll be all right. Uh, I may just come in here with some paper and rough that up and then put another coat on, put the second coat on. And uh, boy, they weren't kidding when they said a hard impenetrable coating. I don't know, it's like you just put a ceramic coating on the, on the metal. It's just unbelievably hard. Why aren't all cars painted with this stuff? I don't know. I'm gonna hold off on the second coat up here because I'm ready. I'm ready to weld this piece on, and I'm trying to get everything done uh, that I need to do in order to make that happen. So I think I'm gonna go with, uh, and I don't want any more delays. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some pour 15 in here, let it dry for a couple hours, and I'm gonna weld this piece up. All right, I think we're about ready to install our panel on the car. I bet you guys have been tired of watching me dilly-dally around all the time. Okay, done. Let's move on. All right. Now the fitment isn't exact. It wasn't exact when I pulled it off of the car. I don't know if you recall that when I pulled it off of the car, <laughs> the darn thing leaped from the car. I mean, it leaped from the car. I think I'm gonna have to tweak that a little bit. Yep. I got a little bit extra weld down there. I gotta take a small smidgen off of this piece right here so I can get this to pull in that way. So, all right, let me grind on that for a minute. All right, I like that better. I. I don't, I don't have such a pronounced gap right there now. Basically, just took a little bit of that and just gave it a little extra curvature because I had some extra weld in here to seal up that, that cut I made earlier. Take a little more off. Yeah, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. We'll deburr that now. Yeah, I think that's gonna fit pretty good. All right, we'll go back down here and see what we, this end down here fits a lot better, actually. The, uh, the gaps are not, well, they're not, they're not pronounced at all, really. They're, it follows the contour pretty nicely. This will have to be mashed down, clamped down, and then, and then welded. If you go back and look at one of the uh, previous videos, when I disconnected the final spot, there was like two or three spot welds. And when I finally got the lights one off of here, this thing literally spring-loaded itself off of the car. My theory was this is a re replacement panel uh, to replace the one that originally came on the car. And, and they, uh, they did the repair badly. They just put it over the top of some metal that had already been rusted, and that was just foolish. It, this thing just, just sprung off of the car. That's what we're dealing with here, really. It's a replacement panel that, uh, you know, the fitment isn't quite right. So... Uh, but we're going to force it into submission. All right, so we're going to continue tweaking this a little more, and we'll be right back. Let's go ahead and start clamping this thing in place. All right, we're going to go right there, see what that gets us. I'm debating on how I want to go about this, whether I want to clamp the whole thing down first and then just kind of eyeball it, you know, I think I just answered my own question. I think that's what I want to do. Let me get some clamps over here off camera. Sorry. And uh, I guess what we're doing is a fitment test. I'm clamping that pretty tightly. By golly, that rascal is going to be on there. When we spot weld that on, that rascal is not going it anywhere all right yeah i'm gonna have to get myself some some of that sealant right there for that line right there that sealant i don't know what sealant i'm gonna get but i'm gonna get some it's pretty flexible I, you know what if this is just the achilles heel of this car 
they tried to use as little metal as they as they could uh, to keep the weight down. During this whole process, I debated on filling in these holes with some extra metal to stiffen this whole thing up. But uh, it's, that's too much. I've got to get it back together. That's pretty cool. I need some more of these. I need like 50 pair of vice grips. All right, folks, I think we're ready to do some spot welding, so stay tuned for that. All right, got myself into position here. Not the most comfortable place to be. Again, we're going to start right here in the middle, and we're going to work our way out. Got a bottle of water here in case we have a little fire. And uh, put that rascal on. Let's see. Yeah, put it on stream. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get our welder set up here. Yep, got to come down a little more. Not the most graceful thing in the world, but uh, you know, is what it is. I just want to get one spot well done. All right, that'll do it. That'll do it right there. Going live. All right. The welder is live. I'm doing three layers of steel now, so let's see. I need to make sure I'm at the right angle. Let's see how well this is going to work. All right. What kind of fireage do we have? I saw a spark fly over there. I believe we got a good one. We got a good one. We learned our lesson from the first go around, uh, you know, getting everything sandwiched together. And we got that weld through primer in between these layers. Plus the first two layers are already together anyway. So, so I'm gonna move that clamp over a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a, uh, a second weld. It makes a nice little black circle there. I'm pretty sure that means we're all the way through. You know, it would be funny if we welded this thing up and then the wind and then the window wouldn't fit. That would be hilarious. I did a test fit already with the window without this piece on to make sure the curvature was right. So it'll be fine. Just relax. Get as close to the clamp as I can. Yeah, we need to go slowly, one at a time. Check for, check for fire. Uh, all right, don't you have an asbestos blanket? Well, go buy me an asbestos blanket and well, you know. This is just to keep, you know, sparks out of the car. Really awesome, so that's all that's for. the GoPro ran out of juice and shut off and uh, I basically got out to the end here had a little bit of an issue trying to clamp down on this so got a few extra ones in here just for a good measure again I'll do a plug weld on the end I still need to come in here and spot weld this weather stripping channel uh, to the to the bottom layer so but I think I'll do that off camera 
pretty tedious. I think I've already bored you enough with the uh, spot welding, but uh, well, it's on there. We just have to do a few more things here. Uh, I've got a plug weld here and uh, probably a plug weld here and here and then spot welds all the way across and then plug welds and then plug welds on the other end as well. All right, we're going to do all that work and then we'll be right back. All right, I think we are done welding this piece into place. We have spot welded down in here where the weather stripping goes. And on this end down here, I did uh, some plug welds, one here, 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 and here. I'm not gonna try to grind that one out. It's just too complicated. It's, it doesn't stick up that far anyway, and the rubber will just go over the top of it. It just doesn't matter. I'll take that back. I did a plug weld there as well. I did many plug welds here to compensate for the fact that I screwed the other end up, which I did, and it's really ugly, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. I thought, well, you know what? To prevent water from seeping down in here, I'll just run a bead of weld down through here and stop about right there. And it just didn't work out very well. It's sealed, but uh, you know we'll take some some filler and some goop and stuff, and we'll uh, we'll try to clean this up as well. And again, we got a plug weld here, and I have one here. My goal in nearly every project that I make is to make the next guy that come along cuss me with just all his heart, because if you get if you try to get this off of this car. You, you're you're gonna fail so you're just gonna have to cut the whole damn thing out i will say this after i spot welded this piece onto this car the rigidity man it's like because before it was like uh, like that you know but now man it's on there i got to wipe this down do a little degreasing and then i think uh we're gonna need to carry on with our uh, pour 15 application uh we need to we need to carry on with that and make sure we get enough coatings of pour 15 on here uh, to uh, prevent this uh, rust from ever reoccurring. So, all right, so up next, we're gonna start painting. All right, so we've uh, been continuing on with the uh, Pour 15, and I've got two layers down here on this hat rack. I've got one layer, or one coat rather, on the underside of that flange there, and all the rest of this down here is the first coat. So the Pour 15 instructions say, uh, wait a couple hours and then coat again. So that's what we're gonna do. And we got it all down in, in the weather stripping channel as well. Once we are done cleaning up this area here and, and getting it prepared for paint and everything, what I'll probably do is go ahead and remove this tape and, and uh, paper and do a little light, very light sanding and prep here in the window channel and we'll do a little pour 15 around that as well, I think. I believe we're knocking it out here. We're just whittling down the little fine-tuned details of what we need to do before we can uh, go ahead and get this window installed. We're gonna wait for this to dry, and then we're gonna add another coat, maybe two more coats. We'll see what happens. All right, we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, fast forward, and we've made a little progress here. So I went down to my favorite big box and found myself some proper masking and paper. It's nice and pliable and easy to work with. And I taped off the rear window, put the tape under the flange, and then I'm gonna go around this channel and just clean it with some super clean and probably just do a little scuff and do some pour 15 all the way around it. On these corners here, I've, uh, I've already sanded this clearly and I uh, went ahead and used the paint scratch primer on this area. And I, next thing I'm going to do is to apply the uh, Dynatron seam sealer right here. Still hadn't got around to that yet. I've been busy getting things ready. And this seam right here will need a heavy uh, dose of it. I had to dig out quite a bit of this stuff. So, you know, I'm just adding back what was already there anyway. So anyway, and I've been sanding the uh, Pour 15 down some to make it, you know, that's pretty smooth. You know, that stuff doesn't lay down like paint, you know, it's got to got to finagle it a little bit. All right, so we're just we're knocking this thing down just one little step at a time. All right, up next, we're going to go ahead and put in some seam sealer here on both edges. And then I think we'll do a little sanding and then we'll uh, clean up this channel and pour 15 that. Uh, and then we'll uh, go ahead and prime this channel up and get it ready for paint. All right, let's go ahead and... Uh, Start laying down some sealant. 
And I'm assuming this is not unlike any other kind of caulking. Today is December the 30th, 2021. Come on, 2022. Let's see what you can do. I'm gonna try to, this first go around, I'm gonna try to just ease it up in that seam right there. I'm gonna mash it up. I got a little gap there in the seam. Try to get that up in there best I can. Yeah, that doesn't smell like your typical uh, house caulk, that's for sure. Oh, uh, let's see, we got a little gap right there on the vertical surface in the, uh, in the weather stripping channel. Man, that's pretty good. Man, if you can caulk your house, you can do this. If you can caulk your tub, you know, your shower and stuff. You can use this stuff. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill up this, uh, where this panel sits on top of the, uh, where it meets the car, there's a gap there. I'm trying to fill that in. And clearly I'm not gonna leave this like this. I'm putting a nice bead across there and I'm gonna smooth it down. I'm gonna put some in here where I put that bead of weld as well. I don't know if that's necessary or not, but I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. I, uh, we've been doing some sanding here on the uh, Pour 15 there and uh, got that smoothed out really nicely. I've been cleaning up this uh, channel around the uh, back glass. We'll uh, put Pour 15 in that as well before we uh, put the window back in place. And we also got some of our sealant in place around our seams. And that is drying nicely. It's been drying for, I don't know, about an hour, hour and a half, something like that. We'll scuff it a little bit before we paint it. I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna prime this area. We'll follow that up with pour 15 application around the window channel. Uh, and then I think, you know, of course, lastly, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll top coat the, uh, the panel here and uh, get everything ready for uh, reinstalling the back glass. And of course, we need to remove the trim from the back glass. We need to remove the old rubber seal, uh, clean up the trim as best we can, reinstall the rubber seal, reinstall the glass, hook everything up, put the interior back together. We've got a lot of work to do yet. And I think maybe, I think maybe I might call around uh, at some glass shops and just have a couple of guys can do this, you know, lickety split, put the back glass in for me. We could probably do it here in the shop, but uh, I'm thinking maybe I'll just get a professional glass person to, uh, to reinstall that. Haven't made up my mind up on that yet, so uh, don't hold me to that. So, all right, folks, appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You know where it is. You folks have a good one, and remember to enjoy restoring your classic Mercedes.